Hi, I'm Kevin. And I'm Amanda. And we are serving up all that jam. All that jam, quick hit. New Orleans suspects Jake Eckert on playing with Colonel Bruce Hampton and Little Feet. You had mentioned Little Feet before. Also, you've had some played with Colonel Bruce. And yes. was is there a was there a Colonel Bruce Hampton celebration show? Yes, I can go on the Little Feet. You can do and both. Colonel Bruce yeah. tangent for a second, <laughs> right? Okay. Yeah, Colonel Bruce. Before my fa- me and my family, my folks live in Louisiana, brother. Before we all ended up here, I was from I gr- I was lived in Georgia as a, as a young kid, and met Colonel Bruce way back. My guitar teacher as a kid played with him in the in the early incarnation of Aquarium Rescue Unit. So if that dates it at all, right? That would have been the eighties. Okay, um, I was young. Um, we knew each other then. <laughs> we knew each other the day he died. And we and and he would come stay at the house and we would play together and he he's on our third album, believe it or not. I've just thought of that. There's some weird connections, man, if you want to talk about all that. Colonel Bruce is a you know, as I look back on Colonel Bruce, a lot of the things when we were hanging out. And he was sitting in my kitchen or sleeping in my son's room when he was in town to play a gig or whatever. And he would do his thing. And if anybody's listening to this that doesn't know Colonel Bruce, and he's Bruce is, he's a, I call him the grandfather of this scene. You know, he's, he's a clairvoyant and a, and a metaphysical genius. (laughs) Rest your soul, Bruce. I could get struck by lightning right now. I'm just letting you know. Um, So, Bruce, the the last time I saw Bruce, let me. W- I was playing at the City Winer in Atlanta. Let's shift over to Little Feet for a second. Little Feet, we were lucky enough to tour with Paul Burr and Fred Taggett for about six years. With the suspects back them up, we probably did fifty to a hundred shows or something like that. And Paul and Fred played on our fourth album. I think it was the fourth one, and we became bandmates, you know, and we would have these jams or these things over jazz fest where everybody would show up at the same time. And Colonel Bruce and Paul and Fred and Dr. John and whoever would come join in. Right. Jojo Herman got one together. That was like all of us. It was called, we do the down on the Bayou. It was like four. I don't remember if you remember that. It was like maybe 10 years ago. We did it every jazz fest for, and everybody showed up, you know? So, Back to what I'm saying. The last time I saw Bruce, Reggie had already Reggie had some health problems that allowed allowed him not to tour anymore. So he was filling in. I remember this is just before Bruce passed, and um, he's just about to turn seventy. And we were at the City Winery in Atlanta. He came out, Paul Barrera, Fred Tackett, all the suspects, and Bruce are hanging in the dressing room, and. Colonel said, Colonel's birthday is over Jazz Fest every year, as is my own. I can tell you a bunch of weird Colonel Bruce shit if we want to go down that that, that rabbit hole. Um, and he deserves every story uh, for better for us. So we're sitting in the backstage. He said, Jake, are you going to come to my birthday? You know, And I, he said, and I said, no, I, I'm playing with Fred Tackett at Tipitina's for the Instruments of Coming thing that night. I'm not, he said, you don't want to go to my birthday. He said, you trust me. I was like, what? Well, you know, he's like, you know, he's like, you know, I, I, it ain't going to be all about me. He's like, you, you're better off staying. I'm like, okay, that was strange. So anyway, we get talking and he and Paul Barrera rest his soul as well. Paul moved on as well. Um, so they're probably jamming. They're probably laughing at us right now from, from the spheres. And, and I said, Paul, you know, I didn't realize you knew Colonel so well. And this is somebody from Little Feet in California, somebody I grew up with and listened to in Georgia. And we're out of New Orleans, but we're playing in Atlanta, which is totally like all of these different worlds colliding, right? There's an album called Arkansas by Colonel Bruce Hampton. And it's it was from maybe the early 80s. And it's really crazy. It's awesome. It's, it's, it's total Colonel Bruce. Paul's like, no, I'm the one playing guitar on 
on Arkansas. I was like, what? I said, I didn't even know you guys knew each other. I thought I introduced y'all. And he said, no, man, I'm the one playing guitar on that. And I was like, you're playing, you know, the song fixing to die. Yeah. That that's the original fix and die. And right. And Paul is playing guitar with Colonel Bruce long before my existence in the music. I, business. I thought, I think that part of Arkansas ended up when a compilation CD called other voices, Colonel Bruce right. Hampton, Strange other voices. voices, strange yeah. voices. Yes. That's yes. What it was. But they're, now they've put the whole album out. And, oh, cool. and, it's, and I, I had another weird one with that album. We rented a van <laughs> right after he died in, in Colorado from a guy on a tour. And that was the CD that was in the, in the, in the Ooh, CD. Like, that is what weird. is happening here? So flash forward to that, back to that concert, we played, Colonel Bruce stayed the whole time. He came and sat with us. He sang Fixin' to Die. And that was about two weeks before he left. Right. And, he, died, uh, he died on stage, right? He died on stage with all with Taz at his feet. And Warren, I think Warren Haynes. Warren, Derek yeah. Trucks, my buddy. I, I, just, I, at the time, somebody had posted a video. It's, it's a very chilling, chilling. Right, movie. which doesn't, I, I hope that it doesn't exist out there because it really isn't. It, but, it's, yeah. it's not, and my, my, I was actually sitting right here with Vince Herman last week from Leftover, who's an old friend, just from being in this circus with me for a while. And um, he came to visit a few weeks back and he was on stage. He was talking about it. And Drew, his partner, was on stage and Derek and Susan were on stage and you name it, they were on stage. And I believe to this day that um, Colonel put it where he, he did it where when he was ready. Oh, to he do. did. It, it, it was weird. I was going to say it was weird to watch because everyone kept playing. They weren't quite sure whether this was or part of the show was, or not. He was, it was, it was, it was, it was, he was messing around at first. Right. Right. And I believe he, it was Derek or Susan or somebody was like, nah. I said, so I've always thought about the guy from Morphine. He died yeah. on stage. Yeah. And how, Johnny Guitar Watson. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah, and people thought he was joking because right. he was a, he was a he was a he was a joke. That, that's what Ed. That's what Zeke was trying to avoid. I guess yes. when he told me he yes. didn't want to die with his boots on. Yeah. So you know. So yeah, that's that's the whole little feat, Colonel Bruce. You know, I I never knew in my as being fans and then co-workers with all these people and then friends of course i didn't realize how small this world is you know what i'm saying they um you said six years they played with you guys Um, about five years five five six years years. yeah did little feet not exist then that was when little feet was only doing maybe like a couple shows a year that maybe Mm -hmm. a handful they do their their thing in jamaica right key west is coming up yeah, and they just were kind of at a point where they were really kind of had to let up a bit. Um, right. They were still doing some gigs here and there, but it was you could probably count them on one hand, you know. Right. We spoke it, to Scott Sherrard a few was weeks that what back. I think is, he, Scott's badass. Yes, he, he Scott's was great. great. And he, Scott uh, was in here in this room. He, w- he was playing with Greg Allman, and Greg Allman came over here one day. <laughs> Well, I was going to say we we actually the rest of the band his we band released, a guy named Peter Levin we was released in something he was a keyboard player from New York City right we and released he, he something they were working for Greg Allman the rest of the band came in to record while he was playing at Gretna Fest with Greg Allman okay. and Greg decided to come over and spend the day with us the session totally stopped because apparently Greg didn't come hang out much and we ate po boys and talked about Garth Hudson and you know that's great. He had a good manicure and was well coloned, man. You know? Yeah, he, uh, yes, yeah, Scott Tall would talk to a bit about the uh, working with uh, um, Greg and, you know, almost getting a Grammy, getting a nod for a Grammy. Yeah. I guess for that Scott's last great, album. I have nothing. And he was, he's always been very, we don't know each other well, but, you know, he's uh, knowing that we had both worked with the guys from Little Feet. I think he's a great, he can sing really good. Like, Trying to even sing like Lowell George to me is a frightening task. Right. Nobody can sing like Lowell George. Right. Malone did try. good. Dave Malone does okay. Yeah, Dave, Dave does it, but nobody – Tommy could get close. Right. Tommy could, Malone could get close. Dave would tell you the same thing, right, Dave? Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, but, you know, Scott 
that's some big shoes to fill. And Scott does a, just what I've seen. And I was able to play with Billy Payne right when the pandemic started. We Because Paul wasn't available, we had F- Fred and Billy come do it like Paul and Fred used to do right. it in, in Philadelphia one night. And uh, let me tell you, Scott does a great job. I watched some of the footage and they're playing songs that they used to not play either. You know, like uh, that they kind of left alone, I think, for whatever reason. Paul, right, well, so little, Scott, <clears throat> props to Scott. Little Feet went through the whole thing with uh, where they had the female singer. And it, it really changed yeah, the dimension of the Sean band there forget. for a few years. All right, she you know, play with us some too, believe it or not. I mean, I liked it. A lot of people, you know, grumbled under their breath a bunch about it. Yeah, and I think that went back to that same thing is who can sing this high stuff. Like, like there's no, not many males, I male vocalists I know that can reach the range in, in power that Lowell George would sing with. Axl Rose. Axl Rose. Yeah, without being cheesy, right? Right. That sounded like Robert Plant or something. Because <laughs> Lowell just had the ability to do that. And the right. more you, you know, you listen, the deeper you, it gets. And I love Lowell George was always when I first heard this album called thanks, I'll, I'll eat, eat it here. Or thanks. I'll eat here. You ever heard that solo Lowell George album? Mm. It's amazing to today. Oh Back yeah. Yeah. With, with the pick with Dylan playing cards or chess or yes. something on the yes. front. Yeah, it's a wonderful album. It's a wonderful album. And it just shows how dynamic he was. And the guy was only in his thirties when he passed, which is, and to me, you know, not to take anything away from anybody in Little Feet, but it's still a celebration of Lowell George, just as the Grateful Dead is a celebration of Jerry Garcia's songwriting and musicality. Yes, you know? definitely. And the rest cool. of them are a bunch of badasses in their own right. You know, don't get me wrong. If you are enjoying All That Jam, please like and subscribe to our social media channels at All That Jam Pod on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook, or visit our website, allthatjampod.com. Make sure to sign up for our email list and tune in every week for new episodes. Also, look for full interviews on our YouTube channel. And remember, stay beautiful, but don't stay underground too long.